Welcome to another episode of Trial Site News. Today we're going to be talking about a demand letter that certain members of Congress have sent to the FDA commissioner. The demand, you ask? Well, they want them to investigate the COVID-19 vaccine injuries, and they want them to do it now. And so, from Trial Site News, I am Adrian, and our episode is starting right now. So recently, a trial site news contributor, Mary Beth, joined a group of COVID-19 vaccine injury advocates as they visited the Food and Drug Administration, or the FDA, and dozens of politicians from both parties over a three-day period in Washington, D.C. Now, that first-hand account we covered in a previous episode here on the channel. And now it would appear that at least some survival-minded people in Washington are starting to wake up to the fact that there may be more than just a few vaccine injured, that in fact there could be hundreds of thousands, if not more, that have been in fact injured post-vaccination. And so it would seem that more politicians are getting into the action. So let's take a look at what happened here last week with a Republican U.S. representative from Florida, who wrote a letter to the FDA commissioner, Robert M. Califf, demanding full compliance with laws associated with the Vaccine Adverse Event Reporting, or VAERS data, and the COVID-19 vaccines. Now, this letter was co-signed by two members of Congress, including Representative Michael Cloud, Republican of Texas, and Representative Tom Tiffany, also a Republican from Wisconsin. See, there is an early warning database introduced to pick up on safety signals once a vaccine is authorized and or formally approved by the FDA. While there is not an absolute correlation between adverse events self-reported, often by physicians or other providers, the database is therefore reporting. And this has led to a staggering 1.4 million reports of adverse events after the administration of the COVID-19 vaccines here in the U.S., Noting this, the Congress members state on no uncertain terms that the FDA scientists have an obligation to investigate the surge of reported cases. They want to know, are there in fact temporal links between the COVID-19 vaccines and VAERS reported adverse events? In the letter Representative Greg Stubbe sent to the FDA commissioner, he wrote that, since the COVID-19 vaccine received an emergency use authorization, or EUA, VAERS has received over 1.4 million reports of adverse events following the administration of the vaccine. If an adverse reaction to a vaccine is identified through VAERS, scientists at the FDA should perform further tests to determine if the vaccine presents an actual risk to public health. Ever since the first COVID-19 vaccine received an EUA, the FDA has been non-compliant in releasing relevant data regarding the safety of the vaccine. In 2021, a group of medical researchers sued the FDA, stating the agency denied a Freedom of Information Act, or FOIA, request to expedite the release of Pfizer-BioNTech's COVID-19 vaccine review documents. In response to the lawsuit, the FDA proposed releasing around 500 pages of the review documents each month, which would fulfill the organization's FOIA request in around 55 to 75 years. In January 2022, a federal judge ordered the FDA to release at least 55,000 pages of material every month. However, the FDA is still refusing to release their analysis of VAERS data following a FOIA request for the records. The information contained within a VAERS report could be life-saving. It is unacceptable that the FDA would withhold such important material from the public eye. Americans depend on the information provided in VAERS to be able to make conscious decisions about their health and well-being. It is critical that the FDA be transparent and release important sets of data to the public. We look forward to receiving your response within 30 days. Now, of course, we here at Trial Site News will be tracking the outcome of this letter, whatever that is, and we will continue to cover this ever-evolving situation and keep you posted both here on the Trial Site News YouTube channel and on TrialSiteNews.com. And that, my friends, will bring our episode to a close once more. From Trial Site News, I am Adrian, and I will see you all next time.